We live in a culture of permits, where we seem to assume and even accept that anything a bit out of the ordinary is forbidden unless we get special permission. And we internalize this so much that we close ourselves off to all sorts of possibilities. There's a brief time in our lives during adolescence where we flip this on its head, where we act as though anything's allowed unless expressly forbidden. I remember being 16, arguing with my dad, yeah, I, I know you said not to drive at night, but you were pointing at your car when you said it, not at mom's car. <laughs> right, that watertight adolescent logic. But there is a good lesson in it. To approach every rule and situation to gauge not what it prevents, but what it allows. Our city is in an exaggerated transitional phase right now, an adolescence of sorts. We all transition from childhood to adulthood, but this is key. The outcome isn't fully known. It's not predetermined what sort of adults we'll be. We come to discover ourselves through adolescence, to find through trial and error who we are, to discover that identity. In Christchurch right now, we have a master plan, a blueprint beautiful blueprint for an end result that suggests that at some point, five, 10, 20 years from now, the future will arrive. We'll be finished, this transitional period will be over and forgotten. I say, let's approach this transitional period motivated by the knowledge that we do not and cannot possibly know the best outcome, and this is our opportunity to discover it. In May last year, Coralie Wynn stood on this stage and introduced the principles behind our fledgling organization, Gapfiller. For instance, our seventh project, the Think Differently Book Exchange. We got a commercial refrigerator from a takeaway shop up the road and placed it on a vacant site with a bench, some paving stones. At the launch event, we invited people to bring along books that had changed their way of thinking. We stocked the fridge and left it there unlocked 24 hours a day with a little sign that said, take a book, leave a book. Many people at that opening event said, so, so who's going to be locking the fridge each night? Or will you take all the books out and put them back in next morning? To the point that our internalized sensors started operating. You know, were we nuts to try this? How long would it actually last? 14 months on, the book fridge is still there. And if you troll through it on a Monday and go back on a Friday, you will hardly recognize a single title in it because it's actually getting used that much. What we learned... What we learned is that temporary doesn't just mean short duration. Temporary means engaging with the dimension of time and using that to make things possible. If we'd set out at the start to make a fridge that would have lasted for two years, certainly we would have found or maybe built a stronger structure. It would have cost more, we might have needed building consent, designers, engineering. It might have been too daunting, and we still wouldn't have known if it was a good idea until we tried it. I'm a doctor of theater. In performance studies, we believe that all of us are playing roles all of the time. In our environment, our surroundings, encourage or discourage certain performances of self. TEDx is a good example. Uh, you all had to petition to be here today. And from the moment you arrive, everything makes you feel that this is an important occasion. And it does change your behavior. This space with 800 seats in the dark facing in the same direction makes what happens up here a big deal. I feel important. It makes you feel that I'm important, and it all contributes to an atmosphere where I perform my best to please TEDx, and you are all primed to be inspired by that. And most of the time, it works. Performances are ephemeral, temporary, but they can leave lasting traces and change the whole way we think and behave. We need to think this way about staging our city now. We need to convince people that these little current temporary activities are vital because we need Christchurch to perform itself as a place where people can try things. Excuse me. The desire is here. Countless people have looked at Gap Filler and other projects and seen the possibility to perform their own ideas, to make this, or this. The sad irony 
is that we actually know of most of these ideas not because they've been enacted, but because people have got in touch needing our help, advice, legal agreements. What we've inspired is a bottleneck. So that's the problem we had to solve. If people will not try things without permission, then you have to make permits easy. So taking inspiration from Renew Newcastle in Australia and countless others, we've created a new independent trust called Life in Vacant Spaces, whose sole job is to broker access to unoccupied sites to enable all of these ideas. It will handle all of the barriers so that anyone can adopt a site to realize some small idea, a, a garden, an artwork, a, a creative business, something they'd like to see as part of their ideal city. And it's easy to give it a shot because it's temporary. Say you're an amateur photographer, uh, a dancer, whoa, hey, hey. Say you're an amateur photographer, a dancer, or, or a baker, and you've often fantasized about taking that next step. Yeah? But you can't take on a 12-month lease. You can't quit your job to give it a try. What if you could try it out for free for 30 days? That's 30 days where you're putting yourself into the city, where something heartfelt is happening in an otherwise fallow space, and it might be great. It might last for 60 days, 90 days, more, and other people might follow suit, and we might have a city full of people trying things that they're passionate about. Yeah? Thanks. With the support of Christchurch City Council now, this is actually happening. We will be borrowing vacant land and buildings from the owners, including Minister Brownlee. We will be dealing with all the insurance, compliance, consents, and we will be brokering access so that you, all of you, anyone, can get busy and start remaking this city. So long as your idea is open for the public, it is a one-off, unique, handmade sort of thing, and you're willing to do the work to make it happen, we'll try to find you a space, and we will deal with any permits. A lot of people said this model won't work in Christchurch because we won't have empty buildings, just bare lots. And so we're working with a group to create the inaugural Festival of Transitional Architecture, and we've got every architecture school in the country bringing students here in October to make structures like this and this, and Gap Filler is making a public pavilion out of 3,000 pallets, which will look something like this, only it'll be blue, I'm told, and a group from Dunedin called Sustainable Habitat Challenge are coming up to build us a tiny off-grid office, which will look something like this, which incidentally required no permits. And I would love for someone to build a sub-consent building with a sub-consent veranda and carport and shade cloth and pergola and create a whole Ewok village that doesn't require a single permit. And this is all happening in two months' time. <laughs> This is all happening in two months' time, and we're totally unresourced and in way over our heads, but everyone should get in over their heads right now. And at the end of it all, we want a series of temporary portable structures, maybe something like this, that we can deploy on vacant sites around the city to be used as pop-up shops, markets, live music venues, whatever people come up with. And this won't solve all of our problems. There will be thousands of worthy ideas that should happen that can't be helped by this framework, but we want to set a tone for this transition and create Christchurch as a place where people look for opportunities. <laughs> the space, nerves. <laughs> the opposite of a permit is an invitation. Meet Gap Filler's dancer mat. It's essentially an empty space in a jukebox. Right? We salvaged an old coin-operated washing machine from a laundromat, and we rigged it so that you plug in your iPod, drop in a $2 coin, and the lights and music activate. Cool. You would not believe how many people used it. It served multiple purposes as a, a venue for dance groups, for social engagements, and it also invited new forms of social interaction and was a springboard for other people's creativity. All it is is a framed empty space and an invitation. Play music and dance here. Our city could be full of such invitations. Stadiums and 1,500-seat performance venues are great, but they are primarily for consumers of culture, so that we in Christchurch can have the same entertainments and touring shows that they get in Auckland, Australia, and the rest of the world. But what does it mean to be here in Christchurch now? 
We want to foster a culture of creators and producers doing and making things of social and creative value. If you have property or ideas and energy, get in touch, because it is for all of us to make this a city full of adolescents who are impatient, idealistic, discovering through trial and error what we like, how we think and feel, who we are. A whole city in transition and honest enough and curious enough to say that we don't know where or how we'll end up, but we're here now and we're ready to try things. Thank you.